If you're standing right here when your partner is serving in doubles, you're not really helping. One of the biggest reasons why people hold serve in doubles is that the net partner is helping a lot. And in order to do that, you have to stand in the right place. And this is not it. But the pros are so close to net, why shouldn't I stand that close to net? Well, one of the biggest reasons is because most likely your partner is not serving with over 100 miles an hour and can hit a dime with that serve. Absolutely. If we're talking about college tennis and up, the service partner can, of course, stand closer up to net because there's going to be a lot of trash to be cleaned up. But let's be real, in club tennis, I've seen very, very few players that can serve consistently and precisely with over 100 miles an hour. And that is what you would need to make this your position at net. The problem with being that close to net is that you're going to get lobbed all day long. You're not posing any threat for the returning player if you're that close. Any time your partner hits a good serve, actually, they can lob you. In this situation, we see that the net player here is leaving way too much room in the back of the court. Alex is doing a good serve, getting a first serve in play. And you see here again, the first reaction of the net player is to move into the middle where he should be to begin with. And then we're seeing that a lob that barely clears the service line is good enough to take him out of the equation. And if you're not outright getting lobbed, you're gonna have to hit really difficult overheads because most likely you're not gonna get the juicy ones right up here. We have Brian here too close to net and too far out to the side. And even though his partner Alex hits a really good serve, namely because he really jams this guy here, Brian cannot take advantage of that. Two reasons. Number one, he's very, very stationary. He's not split stepping and he has to actually move back to reach this ball. And then this is a very uncomfortable height and he just gets the ball behind him and then misses that ball. Now, if we're pairing the too close to net also with too far out, you're becoming incredibly ineffective at poaching. You're not gonna be able to help your partner. And most likely, even when you get to a ball, you will be pulled wide and you're not gonna be able to move forward to get some pop on the ball. So this here is a much, much better position when you're the server's partner. Brian is doing a really good job getting a good serve in, again, jamming the opponent, and Alex has an easier time because of the slightly deeper original position to move forward and then cutting that return off right here. One more reason why I don't like this tight position for club players. If your serving partner hits a weaker serve, and that can happen at 3-0, 3-5, even at 4-0, that a first serve sits a little shorter and the returning opponent tees off on you, you have zero reaction time. You're just going to reflex the ball back, and that gives them the upper hand again. In this point here, the position too close to net gets the net player in trouble because the returner is doing a very good job using Alex's power. He's taking the ball very early and basically goes right at the net person. And if you're that close, you're having to get out of the way with very little time to set up properly for the volume. We see that this here's a very passive response where it really shouldn't be. Here's where you want to start out. In the center of the box, make yourself big. You want to be a visual threat to the returning opponent. If you're out here, my partner has to cover, what, 90% of the court, and the back of the court is way open. Start out here, and then it is key that from here, you move forward and split step as the opponent is actually making contact. Now that you have a deeper position when your partner is serving, how do you move after your partner has served? If your partner hits the ball towards the tee, you always want to move towards that target area in a diagonal or forward fashion. And if you're too close to net, you can't do that. So you're starting further back a little bit. Now you're moving diagonally forward in that way. You can cut everything off that comes over the center strap. If your partner serves towards the middle of the box, a body serve, you're moving straight up. And make sure that you're split stepping as your opponent is making contact so you can bound either way.
If your partner goes out wide towards the alley, you're moving diagonally forward here to cut that passing shot attempt down the line off. One more quick tip about how far to move out when your partner actually serves out wide, because yes, then you do have to slide out some to cover the line. But what you don't want to do is come out all the way here because you're covering out balls. Taunt them to hit the ball right on the line. If they can do that, okay. They can do it maybe once, twice per match. Moving forward, to my mind, that's the furthest you should ever be out here because you can cover this with one wide stride. So again, force them to hit into extremely small spaces. In terms of how far away from the net you should start, this is a no-no. Nope, definitely a no. Still no. So start about, yeah, three-fourths from the net to the service line. And then as the ball is clearing the net, you move in forward, you split step, as they're making contact and you're about halfway from the net to the service line here. Again, from here, you can move into all directions. And yes, I know what you're gonna say, but then you leave the feet open. Not so much really. If you coordinate, you're moving forward properly. There's extremely little space. And at 303540, I'd rather have you lose one or two points per match when somebody actually on purpose hits a low ball down to your feet then losing eight nine ten twelve balls per match where you're getting lobbed where you're getting the ball drilled at you and you can't react so if this video helped you check out this video here because in that i'm discussing another nine common mistakes i see club players make in doubles play